Last week, President Barack Obama addressed the nation as he made his case for military strikes in Syria in order to counter what he calls a chemical weapons attack that was done in Syria, presumably by the Assad regime, which is in control of the Syrian government and acts as a dictator. Assad's basically a member of the Ba'athist Party, which was the same political party Saddam Hussein was a part of and a member of when he took power and control in Iraq. And it fathers in fo and follows in the lines of Assad's father's footsteps, who was also a Ba'athist and left him in control of the country. I don't know if the president actually made a compelling case, though, for intervention in Syria militarily. Americans are still extremely war weary because of what happened in Afghanistan and Iraq. And ironically, some of the same justifications for a military strike in Syria were similar to some of the justifications for going to a war in Iraq 10 years ago. But I question why now? This is not the first time chemical weapons have been used in the Mideast. This isn't even the first time chemical weapons have been used in the Syrian conflict. The first time was actually at Khan al-Assad, which was a town just outside of Aleppo, one of the largest cities inside of Syria. On March 13th of 2013, there was a chemical weapons attack there that left 26 dead, including 16 government soldiers, 10 civilian, and wounded about 86 others. It was actually after that attack when it was first brought up that President Barack Obama made his famous, now, well, infamous almost, that would cross a red line statement. The second chemical weapons attack, that's one that's caught most of the controversy, actually happened on August 21st. And even then, the intelligence coming out from that chemical weapons attack is extremely shady. Some of the casualty numbers go all the way down to 355s on the low end. That comes from the hospitals in Syria that treated the patients, all the way up to 1,700, which is what France puts the official death toll at. The United States says the death toll is around 1,400. Media outlets inside of Syria put the death toll around 500, and both sides blame the other. The Assad regime says it was the rebels who have al-Qaeda links and terrorist links to them. The rebels say it's the Assad regime. The number that, you know, I guess the numbers don't really even matter, though. The point is, does this affect the United States? And plus, we didn't intervene in 1988. When in the Iraq-Iran war, when chemical weapons were used in the northern area of Iraq and Kurds, and the Halabja was actually the name of the city, but against the Kurds, who were in fact joining the Iranians, 5,000 people were killed in that chemical weapons attack, 50,000 people were gassed, and that were all together. Yet the United States stayed out of that conflict. So I'm just curious to why the hat all of a sudden has to be on now to be the world's police. And Obama said in his speech that we weren't going to act like the world's police, but we never stated a clear goal. We're going to launch missiles, we're going to do an airstrike, but we're not going to change the regime. What exactly is going on? This sounds like what the terrorists almost do. Let's put a bomb in Times Square, blow it up without any real goal or stated aim, just to punish the Americans for their imperial ways. Well, isn't that what we're going to do, punish one of these entities for what it's doing? And also, Barack Obama said, we can't intervene in a civil war and expect to change it. We can't do that. We have to let them fight it out himself. He said it at the very beginning of his speech. Oh, if that's the case, and what do these attacks really do? What interest is it really for America? I don't see us having one here. Our national security is not directly threatened, unless you believe our national security is threatened just as bad now by Syria as it was with Iraq in 2003.